for you to leave your family and children wealthy, independent financially from needing other people is much better to Allah and more beloved than to allow them to go and beg people and rely on the community to help them. Do you understand my brothers and sisters? Now here is another thing. Our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet peace be upon him, used to seek refuge from poverty. Another misconception is people think that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam liked to be poor or that, or that he was poor. This is wrong. Our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam neither liked poverty nor was he poor. But Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam chose to have only the minimum finances for himself and his family and he always gave it away. He chose to be an ascetic, zuhd. Why? Because he's the role model and he's the messenger of Allah. He used to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the hadith is in An Nasai, Sunan Nasai. The companion's name is Maslam ibn Abi Bakara. He said, My father, I found my father. His father is a companion of the Prophet, peace be upon him. This was after the death of the Prophet. He said, I used to see my father making the following dua after every salah, five times a day. He used to say, Allahumma, in, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al kufri wal faqri wa adhab al qabri. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al kufri wal faqri wa adhab al qabr. O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from disbelief, kufr, and poverty, and the punishment of the grave. So I used to say them after my father. Then my father said to me, my son, where did you learn this dua from? And, my, and he said, I learned it off you, O oh father. And then his father said, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say this same dua after every salah. The hadith is authentic by Shaykh Al-Albani. So what is the combination between kufr and poverty? He said, oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from disbelief and poverty. Why did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam put these two together? I'm here to educate you, brothers and sisters. I'm not here to motivate you for, for nothing. We want to learn on a deeper level. Why is poverty and kufr put together? And what type of kufr disbelief is the Prophet said, I'm talking about? Here's the answer, brothers and sisters, from the scholars. Poverty, they said, leads to desperation. And desperation leads to selling your dignity and honor. And it leads you to dealing with haram to survive. And may lead to disbelief or doing acts of disbelief in order to survive. And Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi called it kufr. And kufr has two meanings. It means real disbelief from the heart. And kufr also means kufr of action, which doesn't make you a real disbeliever. And kufr also means a third meaning, and that is to be ungrateful and to deny the blessings you have. So to say words that are ungrateful. And poverty can do that to people. So Rasul Sallallahu sought refuge. Now if somebody's in need and is struggling and the only means of survival is going through haram, then they are exempt and there's no sin upon them. But some people, poverty does lead them to even leave Islam. Another meaning is that, is, O oh Allah, do not make me incapacitated, so that you are unable to, so that I am not able to give and help others, making a person dependent on those above them and have no option but to, but to certain things that may compromise their religion and faith. O oh Allah, do not make me among those. Now here is uh, another hadith, beautiful dua that you can say. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal hazan. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from worries and sadness. Wa a'udhu bika min al-ajzi wal kasal. And I seek refuge in you from being incapacitated and from laziness. Wa a'udhu bika min al-jubni wal bukhul. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from being cowardice. A coward and from stinginess, and I seek refuge in you, Allah, from the debts overcoming me and from the power and authority of men.
don't make me below them so that I have to beg and cover and do whatever they tell me and lose my dignity. Listen to this amazing dua of a great companion named Sa'd ibn Ubadah radiallahu anhu. Sa'd ibn Ubadah is also a promised paradise and he was one of the Ansar among the early Muslims and he was a leader and a chief of one of the tribes of Medina. I, I haven't heard this dua from any other, narrated from any other companion. Listen to it. He said, Allahumma habli majdan wa la majda illa bi fi'al wa la fi'alin illa bi mal. اللهم لا يصلحني القليل ولا أصلح عليه أو ولا أصلح عليه أو ولا أصلح عليه. He says, Oh Allah, grant me honor and value. Grant me honor and value. And I cannot have honor and value without action and giving. And there cannot be any action and giving without financial resources. Oh Allah. Limited financial resources do not make me adequately functionable. They don't suit me. And I cannot adequately function without having abundance in wealth. It's very clear. Allah, I want honor and value. I cannot have it without action and giving. And I cannot act and give without you making me wealthy and rich. And not being rich doesn't suit me. I can't function like that. And if I am poor, it incapacitates me. I can't live like that. The hadith is in Al-Hakim, uh, narrated it, Ibn Abu Shayba, Ibn Sa'ad, and Al-Bayhaqi. And the hadith is authentic and very well known. And you know what? As a result of that dua, Sa'ad ibn Ubadah, radiallahu anhu, listen carefully. Rasul Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he migrated from Mecca to where? To Medina. How long did he spend in Medina? 10 years. So each year is, let's say, 365 days. How many days would 10 years be? 365 times 10 years. Don't worry, I've already done the calculation. 3,650 3, days, approximately. Do you know what Sa'd ibn Ubadah did as a result of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granting him that wealth and that dua? He used to gift the Prophet, peace be upon him, a gift every day. Sometimes a shoulder of a lamb, sometimes a, a goat, sometimes something else. Every single day for 10 years, he gifted him 3,650 gifts. How? Because he was able financially. Now, if that's what he did for the Prophet ﷺ, imagine what he did for his people, for his family, for the Muslims, for the community, and abroad. Adding to that, you know the 10 promised paradise among the companions. There are more promised, but in that hadith there are 10. Did you know that seven out of those ten were extremely wealthy?